Video editing is time consuming. It seems like there's always something new to learn. It seems like there's always some new video editing trend that you have fallen behind on. And you feel maybe like you are wasting so much time on trying to edit your video content to market your small business that you're actually not marketing your small business or even working in that small business. You just kind of feel like a video content editor that doesn't know what they're doing. And if that feels like you, there is a much simpler way to edit your video content. And it goes a bit beyond the in app editing features of some of your favorite social media platforms, but it's not so complex that you need to take a week's long course on how to figure out how to use the software. And it's all because of my favorite video editing tool, Descript. And if you're new here, this is actually part three of my Descript video editing system series. Make sure you head back to part two and also part one so you can learn how to organize your video content and streamline your video editing workflow. Because this video is dedicated to all those small nitty gritty features of Descript that allow me to edit short form video content in minutes and edit long form videos in a matter of less than an hour sometimes. I'm gonna show you the ins and outs of all of the Descript tools that I use that allow me to edit my videos super fast and have also allowed me to leave behind complex video editing software like Premiere Pro and why CapCut just doesn't cut it for me anymore. So in part two of this video series, I started to talk you guys through how exactly we go through and edit my YouTube videos. So step one, just a quick reminder. I go through and I use the Underlord tools to give me a very, very rough draft edit. So I'll click edit for clarity, studio sound, remove filler words, remove retakes, and my favorite one, shorten word gaps. Again, this just does some of the heavy lifting of the tedious parts of editing, giving me a nice, rough draft edit to then go and watch. Okay, so now that we've let a lot of the AI tools do some of the heavy lifting, now what I do in step two is go for my very first draft of the edit. This is before I pass it over to my content manager for final editing. So first I will go through the entire transcript and there are certain places where I know I messed up and I'm like, I know I don't need that. So I will just come in here and you can either uh, click the delete button or you can click the strike through and it will remove it from the timeline there. And then what I do is I go ahead and put this on 2X speed and I click play and I listen to it all the way through, obviously getting rid of anything that I don't want included in the video or sometimes even for my content manager, as I'm recording, I will literally say, insert this here, delete this, do that, and giving her some cues. But we will get a very rough first draft of the video. Now, at that time, sometimes, again, I will either tell my content manager or I will come in here and leave uh, comments. So you would just highlight and you can click comment of what I want done in the next part of the process, which is step three, which is including visuals. So we kind of already talked about this a bit in the last part, but let's say in this particular area, I wanted to include a visual. I would hit the forward slash key to start a scene and hit the forward slash key to end that scene. And this is where we can come in and apply visuals to that specific portion of the video. So what you can do is you can come over here and add different elements. There's all kinds of text and shapes and placeholders, literally so many different things. You can add in captions. There's a lot of stock visuals, audio, footage, anything that you want. You can simply, let's say I wanted this B-roll in here, you drag and drop it, and now it is added just to that portion of the video. So it's not included in this scene, not included in this one, but it is included in this one. And what you can see, again, in this traditional timeline editor, it was applied only to there. And this is where the magic happens. So that is part three of my actual video editing process. Do what works best for you. I find AI rough draft, then like kind of humanized first draft. And then this is where my content manager will step in and apply a lot of those different edits. Now to get some really fun visuals, um, other than doing this kind of like manually over here, what we can do is we can start to apply those scenes. I kind of ran you through uh, the pre-designed scenes in the last part that Descript actually gives to you, which these are all great, but might not necessarily always match your brand. And that's where custom scenes will come into play. And now I have created an entire layout pack specifically to my brand. Okay, so as you can see, there are a ton of different scenes here. What I wanna first show you is the end result. So this is a video that has already been edited and posted onto YouTube. So you can see what these scenes look like. Obviously in a full length YouTube video, we have a lot of these scenes inside of Descript because we're creating a lot of different visuals. But what you can see is each of these scenes have very, very branded 
kind of visuals. This is something that I took the time to customize these specific layout packs is what they're called in Descript. You can call them templates, you can call them whatever you want, but I customize them for my brand. So again, my content manager, when she is editing, let's say she comes across a part where we're like, we need a title slide, we need uh, captions, we need some sort of pop-up visual. Instead of having to manually do that, she can click a couple of buttons in the scene panel and apply it right away. And what this looks like in the end, you can come over into the layout pack section. You can see that I have one for my entire brand. I have all kinds of different ones. So for social, I have a captions version. I have screen share, um, a ton of different things for social clips. I have different camera angles that include Zoom, screen share, media. If I have multiple people on my podcast, it helps me edit those. Titles, overlay, presentation, meaning like if we want a list, those are those different lists graphics that I had. The ones that Descript gives you are great, great starting points and great templates. But if you want something completely custom to your business, it is possible inside of Descript. Okay, so there's no great way to go about this, but I found a couple of workarounds. So what you're going to want to do is click on new layout pack. It's going to open up a brand new project, a new layout pack for you. Come into the scene panel. You're going to choose a layout pack that closely resembles your brand so that you're not having to edit it too much. Um, because I will be honest with you, there are, I think, like almost 90 different templates inside each layout pack for the different things that you can do in Descript. So it is a little bit of work up front, but let's say you find that this one is closest to your brand style. You really like how it looks. You can scroll through and kind of see, again, these are all the things you're going to be editing and customizing for your brand. So you click use layout pack. And from there, with it still highlighted, you're going to click on those three dots and click duplicate layout pack. So now it is going to duplicate it. I recommend just going back to the home. You're not going to see it in this main drive. You're going to see it in the private section. Um, you can go ahead and get rid of that one we just created. Again, there's no, this is a newer feature in Descript, so there's no great um, easy way to do this. But click on this one, and what you're going to notice is that now you're going to have a bunch of different layouts to customize. I do recommend go ahead and renaming this to your brand name or whatever you want. And then you're going to see all of the different compositions in here that you need to edit specifically for your brand. Some of them might require minimal tweaks. Some might require a lot. So for some of these like camera, these are just different zoom placements. Um, portrait just means it's for social uh, square. I personally got rid of these square ones because I don't ever post square uh, square content. So basically you just right click and you delete. And that also saved me a lot of time. So go through each of these. Now, this is where you can start to add your brand. So let's say the titles, you have the intro landscape. So what you're gonna see here is these are the placeholders. You don't need to really worry about this too much, but you can come in here and start to change the background. Let's say you have bright pink or yellow or blue or whatever it is. You can come in here and anything on this screen that you wanna edit, go into the layer panel, and you can start to change it to different text. You can upload your specific brand fonts. You can change, um, you know, this bold and italic. And you would go through and do this for each of the different, basically the different compositions, these different templates. Some get more complex than others. So let's see, like some of these quote ones can kind of have different multiple layers. You're going to notice if you ever need to see anything, you can uh, kind of open up that timeline and extend it a bit. This one has quite a bit on it. So personally for me, I don't love this gradient. So I literally click in here and I hit delete and it removed that kind of gradient. If you like it, keep it cool. But you can see it already has the uh, animations applied and things like that. So have fun, play around with it. Now, once you are completely done editing this for your brand, you click publish layout pack and you can go ahead and change the names of these if it helps you. I left them all the same. The main thing you want to double check on is making sure they're in the right category of template. So intro goes in intro, you know, the zoom goes in the zoom because what this does is remember in this scene tab, it allows you to have them kind of categorize and organize. So the camera, there are a couple of different versions, zoom, couple of different versions. So it just categorizes them, puts them into folders per se, but you will publish the layout pack. I recommend adding it to your drive in case you ever add anybody else into your Descript workspace and you click publish layout pack. And now you can easily use it as you are editing. Okay, so now that we've talked about my editing workflow and I've showed you how to use scenes and how to customize your own layout packs, I wanna walk you through a couple other things that we use to help make this video editing process even easier. So coming back into your project, you can come up into Underlord and there are actually a ton of different publishing tools available. So you can draft a title, summarize, show notes is great for your podcast. 
Sometimes what we'll do is we'll come up here and draft a YouTube description. I don't do anything crazy with these custom instructions, but I literally hit submit. And what it's going to do is at least start to pull some of the general information from me. This is a great starting point for helping me write my YouTube description. But what I love the most, and this is why those markers are so important, is it pulls automatically the timestamps that I need to add to my YouTube video descriptions. So lean into some of these publishing tools, again, to help that editing process even more. And then in terms of, I've showed you quite a few different shortcuts, but I wanna show you what the panels actually do and how we use them in the editing process. So scene panel is going to refer to whatever scene you are currently in. So let's say I'm in this one, I can apply the different layouts. I can change the background, add different effects, transitions. I can see the different layers. So what you can see is this is is me directly just talking to camera but if we scroll down into a scene let's say where I'm doing more of a screen share you're going to see all of the different layers you can turn things on and off you can lock them you can mute them just know that anything within that scene is completely editable in this scene panel now layer is a little bit different this is going to talk about individual elements in that particular scene so let's go into this one here and let's say I want to zoom this in a little bit. What you can do is you can like adjust the sizing of that particular um, video clip or element or things like that. You can drop the opacity. You can adjust volume. Um, if you want to speed it up, slow it down. There are different audio effects, visual effects, animations, borders, like all kinds of things. So remember, scene applies to anything that is in that specific scene and layer is for that specific element. And this is really helpful. Like I love using this and makes my video editing so much easier because I can just kind of, you basically click and drag and it moves it for you rather than coming over here, like double clicking, cropping, like doing like very, again, traditional editor type stuff. It's so much easier and quicker to just do it over here. And then the last thing that I just want to reiterate that is going to come to you as time goes on in the script is learning keyboard shortcuts. So one that I've already told you about is hitting that forward slash key to add the scene. That's a super beneficial one. I have a scrolling mouse. So as I scroll, like if I'm selected in the timeline here, uh, nothing really happens. So what I have to do is I have to hold command and that will condense and collapse the timeline like it makes it really, really small or it makes it really big. And if I want to scrub through, I hold shift and it will move it left and right. So just learning some of those basic shortcuts. If I want to play something, I hit the space bar, weird stuff, and put some flair into it. Copy, paste, which is like control or command C, uh, control and command V. Just learning those different shortcuts is also what's going to help you produce even quicker and faster video edits. And then each of these tools, if you do want to use them, they have, if you hover over them, they have designated keystrokes. So like if I want the blade tool, um, I simply hit B and it will select it, automatically select it for me. This is another one of my favorites. It's called the slip tool. So it's Y, you click Y and it allows you to make adjustments to that clip, like when it starts and how long it lasts and things like that. So just know that there are more advanced tools, advanced shortcuts and things like that to speed up your workflow. Complicated video editing doesn't have to be a thing for you. You can lean into all of these amazing tools and features inside of Descript to make video editing like one of the easiest parts of the process. You don't need to spend hours watching tutorial after tutorial or spend a ton of money on very expensive editors that do all kinds of crazy different things with your video content. You can keep it simple so that you can dive into creating videos to market your small business and simply leave it at that. And next week, we're going to dive into the last part of the Descript video editing system series and arguably my favorite part, the one I am most excited to share with you. And that's going to be repurposing the videos that you've created already inside of Descript. And if you want to try Descript for free, head to the link in the description below. Otherwise, I will see you for the last part of this series next week.